I'm a little sick today, so sorry my voice doesn't sound the best, but I came across John Merzak's article about, um, sorry if I said your name wrong, but like about his article about bed adhesion and reducing elephant's foot. And an interesting thing that he was talking about was using the wait time before cure to help get rid of elephant's foot and improve your bed adhesion and use lower base times and lower base layers. He talks about how when you use a wait time before cure, essentially the bed like is just sitting down on the resin and it's not curing yet until after a few seconds usually about like 15 to 40 seconds around there that's what he says um personally i've actually used this method and i was able to cut down my base times in half from like 35 seconds to like 18 or 20 seconds and i also reduced my base layers from like seven to five i still add an extra like two or three because i'm just you still i still want to be sure that's going to be okay but um Essentially, like this, this is actually really, really good stuff, and, and I'm surprised not, not more people are talking about this. What you're doing is basically is you're reducing your exposure times for base layers, essentially saving your LCD screen, making it last longer, and you're not really losing that much time because the time spent waiting, is the same amount of time spent when you're curing the resin. And um, just to, I'm going to try to make a TLDR of what he's talking about and maybe explain the signs of what this exactly is doing. So the first thing obviously is that the bed plate goes down into the vat and then as it goes down into the vat it's going to hit the liquid and the liquid is going to rush out of the way and once the bed plate reaches that 0.05 millimeter height against the FEP sheet the UV light turns on and it begins to cure the resin and the problem with this is that there is still resin moving out of the way and while this is happening the UV light is turned on and it's curing the resin as it's moving and what this creates is it's going to be creating poor bed adhesion and it's going to be creating a lot of elephant's foot on that first layer. Even after 10 seconds, there's still going to be minuscule amounts of resin moving out of the way. And while this is happening, it's still going to be curing that resin, furthering the problems with elephant foot and bad bed adhesion. So by simply adding a 15 to 20 second wait timer before the UV light turns on when the bed plate is fully still, it allows the resin to move fully out of the way and it creates great bed adhesion and reduces elephant's foot. Now you have a 100% contact rate between the resin and the pet plate and you save your LCD screen and you get a nice looking first layer. So I'm going to show you what to do in UV tools to get this wait before cure method. So what you're going to do is you're going to go on Google and you're going to Google search UV tools, which is the software that you're going to be using to add the uh, wait before cure methods. So it'll be this first one over here. It's going to be on GitHub. After you install it, open up the program, and then we're gonna begin using it. And this is one of the biggest problems that I have with the with Lychee and G2 Box is that it doesn't properly use the wait time before cure um, parameters that you put in. Even if you put it in, most of the time the printer ignores it, and it puts it into a parameter which is really weird that it includes the entire time of the uh, the time of the bed plate going up and down. It, it, it's a lot to explain. But basically, it's just something that really bugs me with with that slicing software, and they still haven't really fixed it, despite all these new revisions that they made. So as of for now, we still have to rely on UV tools to properly use this method. Once you got your program open, you're gonna open up your file that you sliced. So I'm gonna find a simple file that's gonna open up quickly. Okay, so this is a file that I sliced on Lifey Slicer. So it takes some time, depending on how big, how many layers there is, how big the file is, it might take like a certain amount of time. Now the file has finally loaded, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Tools, Edit Print Parameters, and these are all the settings that your CTB V4 file has. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna edit your bottom layer count. Keep in mind that when I made this, when I sliced this file in Life Slicer, I already used the predefined settings I'm, I know I'm gonna use. So um, don't worry like about if you already have like a file that says 35 seconds and whatever like we'll change that So first thing you're gonna do is this let's start with five bottom layers. You could do three you could do four I personally like to do five uh, We'll add one transitional layer because I like adding that it just helps the uh, resin to kind of move slowly into the rest of the layers and Here's the most important part of what we're gonna do bottom weight before cure This is the one that's gonna keep the bed waiting when it cures the first few layers, uh, 20 seconds. Now this is wait before cure. This is essentially for the regular layers, which is like, you know, the 2.5 or 2.6 second layers. I actually like adding a wait before cure because it always improves the quality of the print. And a lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but trust me, there's gonna be a slight difference in quality if you do use a wait before cure. 
I'll make a separate video on that, just showing some examples. But essentially, I like to use a one second wait time before hearing the layer. Bottom exposure time, this is going to be your base exposure time. Um, you can set it to 15, 16, 18, 19. You shouldn't need to go more than 20 seconds, to be honest. I like to use 19 seconds because I've seen, I think this is what I've experienced, at least with my printer, which is, a, th for this one, it's going to be the EPAX E10. I noticed that 19 seconds works the best. Exposure time, this is for the Soraya Tech, so I use 2.5 seconds. And this is something very important too. I don't know why uh, UV Tools does this, but sometimes when you import your file, it changes the bottom retract speed to 10 millimeters a minute, which is really slow. So usually yeah, I just make sure you fix that. It's just, I don't know, it's a bug on the program. This has been fixed. Uh, just make it 60. That's good enough, honestly, for it. Uh, bottom retract speed, that's, that's again the first few, the first base layers. Uh, 60 should be good enough. Bottom lift height. This is a big file, so I'm going to probably make it like 6 millimeters, actually. Um, it's usually, I, I could, sometimes 4 works for me, but I still don't really like to use um, low numbers but sometimes if i want to be safe i'll just add an extra millimeter um, if i'm trying to print, print fast i'll keep it at five or four um, the chances of getting a flare dough might increase because it might not fully lift off the uh the, the fep sheet or something might still be stuck to it but i never experienced any problem before but you know hey it's on you i'm just talking about my own experience and that's it really that's really all, all you honestly lead um he also said you also like he also recommended using a light off uh, wait after curing because usually it's um, the when the resin just cures it's pretty hot so waiting an extra second or two can also help with getting the model off the FEP sheet um, I don't use this method you could use it it depends on what you want to like you know what you, what you want to experiment with I'm just working I'm trying to also like still get my print done in a in a good time timely manner without using like too much wait times but if I really wanted to like ensure that something was gonna stick pretty well I would use wait after cure uh, but not necessarily that's it really so you're going to click this over here edit print parameters you see all the settings showing you i think that changed ensure that bottom wait before cure is there and wait before cure is there and then you also ensure like change the time see like like i said it's a bug it's saying it's zero but it was 10 but make sure you change that because it can make it really really slow in the first few base layers and click yes and then it just zooms in it's going to, uh, like a middle of that layer and that's it uh, once you do that, essentially the file is the same, it's just now it, it changed each individual layer. Once that's done, I'll click File, Save As. Um, so usually I like, to, I like to, the way I name my files is like, I name it with the exposure times used. Um, so I put 19ST, which is 19 seconds with the transitional layer, and then the base layer is 0.5 seconds. And also when I name it this way, I know that I've edited it in UV tools, so I don't get confused with other files and be like, wait, did I add this in UV tools or not? Usually, like, I'll just add the base name of the file uh, after I sliced it in the program, and then I add the exposure time after I edit in UV tools. And then you just can click save, and then that's it. Um, the great thing is, even though it takes a long time for the file to open, it saves you really quick. And once that's done, you can go into your uh, flash drive, copy it there, and then you'll see how what is going to happen on the parent.